is Bhante Modito. Um, I was tasked to do the, with the guided meditation as, as all the monks and nuns in our monasteries. Um, so we are doing the guided metta meditation. This is in uh, behalf of Ajahn Brahm, our teacher, for his 70th birthday. Ajahn Brahm has his, one of his favorite chantings. I don't know favorite, but sometimes he said that they used to do the metta chanting here in the Bodhinyana monastery and it's not actually the one where the, what, what, which is usually uh, repeated the Metta Sutta, the Karanya Metta Sutta uh, Metta should be done and it's a little bit different I, actually interestingly enough he sometime, one time somebody asked one of our supporters what's the one which he sometimes talks about this one Sutta which makes him making him so elevated that he couldn't even chant the rest of the sutta uh, when they, after they were doing it and there is, he wrote down this piece of paper and this person had just um, they had uh, laminated it took a picture of that lamination and that one is it's a different one than the Karani Metta Sutta there's no, there's no many mentions of different Places of meta explained it differently. This is, but this is the sort of the second, second, the, uh, the other way of explaining it. Not really explaining again. It's there's nothing really that is not explained very multiple ways. Even in this, what what it appears in the suttas. But this um, this word or this little sentence, what Ajahn Brahm wrote into, into this piece of paper, he says. Metta saha gatena cheta sa ekan tisang paritva. And that metta saha gatena. So it actually it, it's mentioned in quite a few places. I just took a one example here. Let me look at it. seems to be appearing almost all the Nikayas. And uh, Buddha uh, praises the uh, metta practice. Um, so in this I've taken, I'm just taking Vata Sutta uh, from Majjhima Nikaya. In here again it goes, So metta sahagatena cheta sa ekan tisang bharitva viharati. And so what that means for those of us who our Pali is not so good, uh, um, he abides abides in pervading one quarter with mind imbued with compassion so this um that's why quite often you hear monks and nuns teaching the metta you uh, you sort of having one direction you start uh, expanding your metta when you when you do the practice and then the uh, then the, what the buddha says here that that do tiang that 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 tiang that that cha tutang and obviously that means that you like uh, and that then says likewise the second of the second quarter um, direction likewise the third direction likewise the fourth to uh, fourth direction so above below around and everywhere to all as to himself he abides pervading the all encompassing world with the mind imbued with loving kindness abundant exalted immeasurable without hostility without and without ill will and it's, it says then after that comes to all the other uh, uh, brahma viharas come after that and from that uh, what happened what you gain from this at least it goes into this um, little sequence here on this sutta uh, that other suttas it seems to mention that if you if you do that uh, this was taught to um, the other people who, if you want to have if you get want to get born in a Brahma world this is the way to get born in a Brahma world um, but in, in this sutta uh, what comes after that he says he understands thus there is this there is the inferior there is superior and beyond there is an escape from this work, whole field of perception he knows and sees thus his mind is liberated from taints and sensual desire 
from the taint of being and from the taint of ignorance. When it is liberated, there comes to knowledge. It is liberated, he understands. Birth is destroyed, the holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more coming to any state of being. Because this is called the called one bath with the inner bathing. Um, so it, it is a quite nice. So this actually that in this one is it seems to be that the sequence because it comes so quickly here that the meta actually take you all the way, all the way to the end of the uh, end of the samsara, so the, to the nibbana. So in some other places it extols the virtue of meta, like you get born in a high place. Some places it says other things about metta. Here the Buddha takes it all the way to straight to the Nibbana. So it is a nice, nice chant. I can see why Arjun Brahm really um, was sort of blissed out about uh, chanting that 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 little that um, thing they did. We don't chant that uh, that formal anymore. We do the normal normal thing, the Karaniya Matta Kusalena. And sometimes when you repeat the same thing, and if you don't really get to the meaning of it, it you, you might get lost into it. You just repeat something you heard without really giving it to the meaning. And that's what Ajahn Brahm always says, that when he was doing that, he really, really put the effort into uh, of, of the practice into the place. So while chanting it, he was really um, directing his mind with the loving kindness the one direction, the other direction, all the directions and then it expands and expands and he said after a while he couldn't even do the chanting and that's why he said maybe we cannot do this chant because I, we, they, so they left it out from the putting out chanting book. But let's try ourselves as well do what Dajan Brahm was doing and really try to um, practice ourselves the same thing so instead of just chanting the Metta, metta Sutta and not really feeling it, let's try to feel meta. And I like that uh, that little uh, sequence when he says they. Um, so one of those things is we. I like to teach it in the, in the way that we we have to learn the meta from somewhere, but we have to learn to quite often do it to ourselves first um, instead of starting to spread it out too fast you you don't really get the feeling before you start going too far so let's try to in this session I'm giving you let's try to really focus on our attention now to ourselves. Maybe other teachers have done the same, but I would assume quite often you start directing it outside ourselves. And if you don't have money in bank, you cannot give. So remember that if you don't have metta towards yourself first, you don't have anything to give. So let's try, in this practice, uh, what I'm giving you, let's try to practice metta towards ourselves. So now we're going into the uh, guided section of the meditation. So first, as always, take a nice and relaxed posture and place to make sure you are happy and comfortable where you are. To loving kindness towards your own body, your actual your own physical body. Feel those things where you might have tension in your body. Actually sort of look around as if you were scanning your body with your eyes. I can feel myself, I have a no hay fever, so I get a little bit frustrated with my nose quite often. And 
and it's morning time now that I'm recording this so maybe I didn't sleep so well so I might have a little stuffiness and tightness in my face so I'm just gonna give loving kindness to my face and your face is actually quite often that indicator what's happening if you want to read people's minds read their face look at their face so if you want to know how you feel sometimes you have to almost like look your own face mm. what does my face look like mm. my face look tired my face looks like grumpy well we don't try to change the feeling now we are doing this we're just giving loving kindness actually that physical face of ours so give give kindness softness to your face think of somebody loved one of yours like your I always think of my grandmother quite it's very very easy for me to think like how somebody would take care of you and quite often they kiss you on the cheeks and you know they give you like a little hug and all that and they touch your face and you know just that kind of feeling do you remember that feeling when somebody's taking care of your face where they like hug you when you feel that their shoulder on the on the chest when they're giving you a hug and you there's that feeling on your face that softness and caring caring give the same care to your face it's okay it's okay to be stuffy tired And relax your face. Relax it, relax it. Give it kindness and softness. And then we try to scan the body a little bit more. We start from back of your neck, your head, oh. Make sure your neck is nice and relaxed and soft. I do not know when you're looking this video, but whether it's morning or night time or evening, quite often you're carrying the weight of the world on your neck. Just above those shoulders. Same thing, feel a thing where somebody's taking care of you quite often they would the hand the soft the caring thing on the on your just behind your your head on your neck and say that's okay. Just relax. So same way you put your own imaginative hand on your own neck and say that's okay. You can relax. 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 It's okay to take care of yourself. In the same way, we continue with your hold, your shoulders. Put a hand over your own shoulder. Your own best friend. Giving loving kindness. 
might not be really that feeling yet. But if you care, it will start growing a little bit inside of you. Again, it's that feeling which you got from your somebody who really took care of you. Your mother or your father or your grandmother or even your dog who cares. Even like the nature outside, the nature doesn't want us to suffer. As if you were taking care of even a house plant where you're watering them or any low creature you come across and you try to help them. The same way you put a hand over your shoulder and let it relax. Care for the feelings, don't try to push them away. We're just sitting here with our own best friend. Now look if there's anything else which you feel tiredness in your body. Whether it's on your chest or your throat is feeling tight. Or your stomach, where quite often you turn your stomach and then you get upset stomach. Just place your physical, but mental, what I meant is actually your mental hand on that tight spot. Giving it kindness. Softness. And if actually if you feel like you want to put your physical hand, you can do that. That sounds like a good idea. If your chest is tight, put your both hands on your chest and just Give it all the softness you can towards that. Or on your stomach. Wherever you feel that tightness. It's okay to take care of yourself. We're giving metta to ourselves on this meditation. If your mind starts thinking discursive thoughts, don't worry, concentrate now on that physical feeling, on that softness. Breathe to that place of tightness.
give it acceptance. Just like this. person who really cared for you, you care for yourself. Then start going into softness of the mind, when you're giving loving kindness, softness, care, compassion, contentment to your body, the mind wants to be in this place, just feel your muscles are still relaxing in your body. Every time you notice something getting softer, give it more kindness, and it gets even softer and softer, and your kindness grows and grows. Now we're going into silent mode, 10 to 15 minutes. While you're in the silence, you can allow the breath to appear. Giving you kindness, or you can keep looking your body with kindness, with real friendliness, and then if something happens, like the breath appears, then give that kindness. Mind wants to go back to the body, give body kindness.
now because of that. Editing of these videos, you can actually, we are coming to the end of the meditation. Feel if your body is more relaxed. Feel if you can feel kindness in your body. Feel if you can feel soft, kind, gentle, even if it's a tiny bit on the edges of your mind, there's a seed growing in your mind, a metta, give this soft, loving kindness feeling from your body. And that seed from your mind. Rub it in the beautiful kindness. And give it to all the ones who have taught us these things from the Buddha down with all the Sanghas and your friends, Kalyanamitas, Ajahn Brahm. How can you take the meta to the next level? On oh my previous um, guided meta, I was trying to guide the meta towards your own, almost your own physical being. Not even going into too much of your mind, but your own, own body. Quite often the whole body is something we forget, we, we try to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing it. Myself, I didn't sleep last night too well, so I was feeling a bit groggy this morning and there's that grogginess brings, quite often it brings um, negativity, as if you, your body is against you. You know, you're really working against your body instead of working with your body. But if you're giving smile to your body, sometimes we, we have a bit of a lofty idea of this metta meditation. And sometimes people say, quite often actually, People say to us monks who we'll teach that uh, they don't really feel it. No, because you are just, you don't feel it because you're just repeating a certain kind of formula which doesn't actually maybe resonate for you. If you want to know what metta really is, that you have to learn what the feeling is and you have to grow it like a Quite often we give that simile like a plant, but I like dogs. If you like cats, that's fine. But it's like growing a little puppy, a little dog, for yourself. Not for yourself, but you know, in, in your household. Little dogs 
really need guidance. And they're just playing around and doing their little doggy things, but you have to just give them space and you have to give them guidance, but at the same time it's not a flood of loving kindness. You have, they have, you have to make them feel like they are part of your family. So make yourself feel that you are part of this team of something, somebody you need to take care of. Don't be your own worst enemy. So in this, in this session, let's try to concentrate on the mind. So close your eyes. And let's try to look at those poison darts in our own minds. So just ground yourself into the seat. Wiggle a little bit. Make sure you're comfortable. And now we will look into your mind. How do you look into your mind? Well, it's easy, isn't it? Is it? Your mind is a stream of thoughts and blackness behind your eyelids and noises. But that is just a pie product almost. What indicates, what would be indication of how you feel? Now your mind might be racing around, looking here and there in your mind, and it's just almost nothing you can hold on to. Or there might be something like, oh, you can see anger there, it's almost like a fire. Or you can see disappointment, it's sadness. There might be blueness of that. Of um, some kind of seed of depression almost there. But one indicator would be to look at yourself straight on your face. I don't mean I actually mean look at yourself in the mirror, but on your own mind side. Look at yourself in your face. How do you see yourself? Now, I want you to Smile at yourself. Does it feel comfortable? Does it feel like you are making this up? Does it feel like nice? It's nice to smile at yourself. 
don't try to make this up. I, I'm not telling you have to. You have to feel that it feels nice to smile at yourself. Try to find that feeling. What does it feel when you smile at yourself? Is it awkward? Is it? I don't want to smile at myself. I don't. I don't smile. Whatever that feeling is, see that little feeling there. That's what we try to find. Now let's try to do it again. Smile at yourself. But this time, smile at yourself as you were smiling to a good friend, somebody like Ajahn Brahm. People always, people always come to monastery and we see them in Pinda Badline. And they always smile at us, monks. We receive so much smiles. And it makes us feel good. Smile at yourself. Don't worry if it doesn't feel right. You're looking at this creature who also deserves to be smiled at. If you're seeing somebody you haven't seen for a while and you really care for them, you smile at them. And through that smile, breathe through that smile. As if you're breathing a little piece of sunshine into your face. Breathing in sunshine and kindness. Every out breath is just going out softly as well. And it flows out very naturally because of the kindness, what's you, what you're bringing in. Now I want you to bring a scene from your life where you are just relaxed in a warm sunshine day. Just kicking back. You're breathing in the sunshine. through the smile on your face. Why would you ever want to be anywhere else?
Just look at the sun above you. Feel the kindness of the universe. You're just content to be here. Then the breath starts bringing you in kindness to your mind, and bringing kindness with every breath. The out breath. It relaxes you even more because it takes away tightness. How nice it is just to sit here. Breathing in kindness. Then you start feeling that there is somebody you care right next to you. Somebody you really, really, respect. They're also breathing in the kindness, the care from the universe, sitting in this sunshine of metta. You feel their metta as well. If it's not human, it could be a dog. It could be a cat. It could be anything. As long as you feel that they are also relaxed and kind. And you're both happy to be here. In this nice, soft place. Breathing in kindness. Letting everything else go on your out breath. We are both very happy to be here.
Can you feel some distance away? Some of your other people you care are walking by somewhere there. Close by. Send them your best wishes. They are also feeling the sunshine of kindness in their face. There's more people coming and going by slowly on your journey through lives and all people you really care then stop for a while look up and feel the metta so nice We are all in this together with yourself the person right next to you and those people a bit further away who you are close contacts so the meta grows a bit stronger You're all breathing together. And the same. There's more people yet again. You see a bit further away, but you don't really recognize them. The men, women, dogs, cats. You don't really know them. They're walking by quietly. Quietly. They're also feeling the metal. So they slow down. You also envelop them with this feeling of kindness. We all smile, even though you don't see them, you feel them. Feel their kindness. Oh, how nice it is to be here together. We are all one. And you spread your mat a bit further. You start feeling the earth around you. Space around you, feel it. Everywhere above you and below you, you feel the softness and kindness.
we stay in this space quietly for a while slowly slowly taking in more objects the matter gets stronger slowly takes more things into the field of your kindness the matter goes stronger the further it goes and you are like the field of matter Now if you just feel that you're being placing out of meta you feel that you're just a field of merit, kindness, start bringing it back. Bring it back and it goes stronger. It's like you're squishing together all this matter, the wonderful loving kindness from the size of the universes into our Milky Way galaxy. And the more you put together, more concentrated it gets. You start bringing it back past the sun and the moon towards our own blue planet. It's enveloped in your kindness, in your metta. Keep bringing it back. It starts to go even stronger. Now you just hold the meta in your hands. In your cupped hands, you have this ball of kindness. You breathe in for a moment into that kindness. It's always within you, this ball of kindness. The more you give, the bigger it gets. Now you give this gift to Ajahn Brah. Thank you for teaching us 
all of these years. Thank you for keeping us in the path towards the end of the Nibbana. And now we handed this gift to our teacher. But remember, you always have it. Now I'm going to ring the gong three times to end this meditation. So much. I hope you had a good meditation. I certainly had a good time. Now what somebody else will do.